Hi everyone. A very good morning to all of you. Welcome to Android application development using Java course. I'm your trainer. My name is Pavan Kumar. So let's go through uh, the content of the course today and understand what we will be getting out of this course. So you will understand and get an hands-on experience on all the core concepts of Android with this course. You will be able to build 20 plus applications by the end of the course, which are all around the course content. So when, when I teach you a con, uh, when I teach you a concept, I'll make sure that you develop a sample or a demo application on the same concept so that you'll get a real hands-on experience with that concept. You'll also get a repository of code corresponding to all the concepts that we covered along with the applications. Also, I will be sharing you a nice ebook, which, which is written by me. I'll also share you a nice ebook by the end of the session. And, and in that ebook, you'll have everything. So whatever is essential to a to an entry level Android developer, you will get all of that in that ebook. We will also be covering so many concepts in this course. So that ebook will help you to refer to those concepts, also to help you understand the other um, needed concepts, whatever are there. You can get started. Definitely, you can get started with the Android application development journey with this course. And that's a promise from my end. So my name is uh, Pawan Kumar. I already have told you. I'm a Google certified associate Android developer. I'm also a graduate um, in the core Sudacity Android developer in a degree. It's, it's been around five years since I completed those certifications and courses. And I have been training uh, students uh, and uh, um, faculty and uh, also um, the software developers from a quite a long time. It's been already eight years since I started my training journey. So this is the brief outline of the content that we will be covering. Okay. You will have, you we will have, um, we will cover all these concepts one after the other. You can take a closer look at the syllabus with the link provided to you. There is a link provided to you. You must have got an email. And in that link, you will have the entire course content in a detailed manner. So, uh, hope I'm clear. Hope I'm audible. I did not get uh, a single response from uh, the, the, the crowd. So I'm hoping that I'm audible because my mic say my mic symbol shows shows that uh, my voice is getting transmitted. So let me know if I'm audible. Just say yes in the chat if I'm audible, or you can raise your hands to to just say yes. Either of the things would work for me. Thanks, Aman. Thank you, uh, John. All right. So let's talk a bit of uh, Android in the beginning. What is what is Android? When whenever somebody asks you what is Android, and by the way, thank you, Akanksha, for responding. When someone asks you what is Android, what would be your response? We all know that Android is an operating system. It is built based on Linux kernel. All right. So what is Linux kernel? Linux kernel um, is a library that supports development of operating systems. And it is entirely open source, which means anybody who have an access to Linux kernel code which is available online, they can actually modify. They can modify this code according to their taste, according to their requirement, 
and then they can use it. They can also distribute the customized version of this Linux kernel to anybody in the world across. So that is what we call open source. And we have Linux kernel and on top of this Linux kernel, Android is built. Android operating system is entirely based. So before we talk further about Android, let us understand what is mobile application development. It is very simple to understand. Let's say if you want to build a website, you, you are called a web developer. Correct. Let's say you are developing a software for the desktop. You are still called uh, a desktop app developer. If you build software that runs on mobile devices, you are called mobile application developer. Okay. It includes software development, not only for mobiles, but also for tablets, TVs, wear, auto, and other smart devices. Correct? Android does not only run on mobile devices. How many of you are aware of it? It also runs on TVs. I use an Android TV. It also runs on, uh, on watches. We call it wear. We, it, it also runs on auto. Auto in the sense. Um, all of you must have seen cars, the today's cars. If you purchase a car today, you will get infotainment system. And most of the infotainment systems that you see in the cars dashboards are all based, most of them are based on Android operating system. So these are... Uh, uh, if you develop an application that runs on one of these devices, you are called as mobile application developer, right? So there are uh, two major uh, development or major mobile uh, mobiles that we see in the market. If you consider 100 devices, let's say you considered 100 smart devices, smartphones, let's say. You picked up random 100 smartphones in the market. 88% of them would be Android. They will be based on Android, 88% of them. And the rest of the um, market share is occupied by the other dominant players, such as iOS. Uh, if there is another custom, Linux devices are coming out. So, the rest of the market share is held by one, I mean, iOS. So compared to Android, in comparison, Android and uh, Apple, Android devices are more, and there are more number of Android users. For that, there are multiple reasons. For that, there are multiple reasons. So we will discuss about them in the future. Okay. So now let's come to the question, what is Android? We already discussed that Android is an operating system based on Linux kernel. We interact with this operating system by touching the screen. It is already used. It is also used over 80% of all smartphones. It also powers devices such as watches, TVs, and cars. There are over 2 million Android applications in Google Play Store. It is highly customizable, by, highly customizable for devices vendors and it is open source basically so over 2 million android apps in google play store and counting the number is increasing every single day if not every single hour right because because there are there are billions of devices across the globe across the globe and we need to address their use use cases the users use cases see if if there is a huge demand for an operating system and its devices there will definitely be a huge demand for the developers all right now coming to the question that is asked by akansha one of the participants kotlin language is not included in the course is it not necessary 
yes uh, you can also learn kotlin but uh, by the end of the session i will be teaching you the very basics of kotlin but in this course we will not talk much about kotlin okay android applications can be developed in multiple ways it is not the only way that we can develop android applications the way we are going to discuss in this session is based on the native um, application development. This is just native application development. This is not cross-platform or this is not um, anything else. It is the applications will be developed based on the software development kit that is provided by the Android, the default Android framework. We will be using Android Studio. We will be using the SDK and we will develop this project. So that's how we do it. Okay. You're welcome, Akansha. So yeah, we will we will use Java as our programming language. We will not use Kotlin. I will teach Kotlin only, only the basics. So if you are expecting Kotlin, uh, this is not the correct course for you. So what is this point highly customizable for devices or vendors? Let's say if anybody wants to use this operating system, let's say I'm uh, I'm the owner of uh, some XYZ brand. I'm manufacturing mobiles with that XYZ brand. Now, as I want to use Android operating system and want to customize the UI to, S to some extent, to some extent, I can do that with the, uh, because the operating operating system itself is customizable. So I can customize it. I can modify the UI and I can use it as a XYZ brand. So that's the meaning of customizable. This is the very reason why we see different UI screens on different brands. Samsung's UI looks different. Um, Motorola's uh, UI looks different because Motorola most of the time it uses its uh, it uses the it uses the stock Android operating system. It will not customize it much. Samsung's UI looks different. Redmi's UI looks different. OnePlus UI looks different. So these are all the different brands. I mean different manufacturers we have and they customize according to their requirements now is it that we touch the screen and interact with android no we can also interact with the help of um, sensors let's say you are playing a car game okay your car is speeding up you want to take a right turn what will you do you will just tilt your device to right and your car will take a right turn in the game isn't it have you ever played a car game on android uh, trading system i hope most of you would have played a game isn't it all right so we also interact with the operating system by the help of sensors let's say you got a call you answered the phone and took your phone near to the ear so that you can hear the other people's voice, other person's voice. Right. So as soon as you do that, there is a proximity sensor just next to your, uh, mostly it is next to your uh, camera, front camera. What it, what it does is it will turn off the screen so that you cannot interact with it while you are on a call. This is also based on sensor. So we can interact with Android devices, not only by touching the screens, but by also with the help of sensors, right? This is how Android home screen looks like. These are some examples of applications. Have Has anyone played Pokemon Go? I did not play as it was released. 
and it is also been banned. By the time I thought of installing Pokemon Go, it is already banned in India. So has anyone played Pokemon Go? If you have played Pokemon Go, you can raise your hand. I will be happy to see you. Oh, Pranay played it. Same school. It's based on uh, argumented reality, it seems. Right? Right. So what are the features of Android? These are just a few features of Android. We have beautiful UI. We have good connectivity. Storage support is there. You can also extend this storage support, which is not available in the other in the other dominant player market. Media support is there. Multitasking is possible. Widgets are there. Multi-language support is there. And there are a lot of other features of Android. So we discussed about open source project. Let us talk about history of Android. I will not eat up a lot of time on this history because it is not so necessary. But knowing this is good. So there are these four people who are working in mobile platforms, Andy Rubins, Nick Sears, Chris White, Rich Miner. These four people are in good positions in mobile uh, mobile service providers or uh, telecom service provider companies. So these four people, what they thought was they can start a company by the name Android INC and develop an operating system for digital cameras. They, they did not target to develop the operating system for mobile phones. They wanted to do it for digital cameras. So what they did was they floated a company by the name Android INC in 2003 and started developing operating system. And soon, very soon, they realized that the digital cameras market was not so big. So they will not be able to make enough money. That's the very reason they diverted their efforts into building an operating system for mobile phones, but not for digital cameras. Liking this idea very much, in 2005, Google acquired it. And the development process continued till 2008. And in 2008, the first mobile that is based on Android operating system was released. It is called HTC Dream. So you can see that in the picture. That is how the uh, first version of Android operating system used to look like. We don't have much features. Only maps are included. Um, I think browser is also included, but nothing much to offer. You can make calls, you can text people, which is already been offered by basic mobiles. You only, only we have those features, except that we have a touch screen. So from its initial release, Android is released in multiple versions. Till today, that it is released in multiple versions. After 1.0, 1.1 is also given as an update. After that, Google started giving its versions with code names. So that we have Cupcake, Donut, Eclair, Froyo, Gingerbread, Honeycomb, Ice Cream Sandwich, Dilly Bean, Kit Kat, Lollipop, Marshmallow, Nugget. Oreo, Pi. And after Pi, Google decided to stop giving its versions with code names. So we have 10, 11, 12, and 13. 13 is also rolled out. Um, uh, people are getting updates. So I did not include 13 because it is still being rolled out. It's not entirely rolled out. Only portion of the people who are able to get that update has got it. Some of the people are not getting it till today. So maybe we'll include 13 tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, maybe. So in the early days, things were pretty basic as I told you earlier. Apps like Gmail, Calendar, Maps and YouTube are integrated. And after that, Cupcake got released 2009. Donut got released in the same year. Eclair was in 2010. Proyo was in 2010 again in May. Gingerbread released in December 2010. And from Gingerbread, 
um, the design of the UI has started to take uh, take off. It started to take off in Android, I would say. So from 3.0 is especially made for uh, uh, Honeycomb is only made for tablets, not for mobile devices. It's specially designed for tablets. And ice cream sandwich, it is it is for both mobiles and tablets. And from 4.0, we we see um, the UI design and and the same kind of design we will see till date. There are a few changes happened over the uh, over the time. There are a few changes happening. So 4.4 is also focused mostly on um, UI part. Okay, 5.0 introduced a lot of features. Some features include organizing our applications into folders. Right from 6.0, security was improved. Improved. Um, the team focused much on building the security of Android by offering permission section in Android. So if someone wants to access the camera, let us suppose, till 5.0, it is possible without using a permission at all. Or by declaring the permission in the manifest file would be sufficient, which is a static registration of permission. But from 6.0, you should get the con con consent from the user. You should throw a pop-up asking the user, Hello, I want to access your camera. Would you like to allow me? Then the user would decide to whether click on allow or deny. So that kind of consent we have to get from version 6.0. Security feature is implemented. And there is a support for fingerprint scanning, which is brought in version 6.0 only. So version 7.0, Actually, based on this version, Google released its own devices into market. They are called Google Pixels. How many of you own a Google Pixel? Can you raise your hands, please? I want to see your hands. If you use a Google Pixel. Great, Aman. Aman uses it. Fantastic. So Google Pixel offers, uh, offers a smooth UI fluid um, work flow and uh, an excellent camera correct it's not comparable if the camera quality that google pixel devices have is not comparable with the other android operating system based uh, devices so 8.0 also improved improved notifications there are notification channels introduced and uh, much more features we'll learn all these features one after the other while we talk about these concepts 10 11 12 12 for 12 i did not include any other details but you can go through these this wikipedia link to learn more about android version history so time for questions guys time for questions as it is our first today, um, I am not teaching anything else part of this, but I would like to show you a few applications that we would develop as part of the course. So once it is done, we can we can come to this questionnaire session. So let me show up my device to all of you to understand what are the applications that we will develop in this course. I would like to show some of them because only some of them have been discussed with the other batch. I cleaned my device already, so I do not have uh, the applications that are covered for the earlier batches. Let's take a look at it. So I don't use a SIM on this device because this is dedicated to only delivering the classes. 
So the recent applications uh, were the first application that we do will be a score tracker application where you can track the score of a team. You, by clicking on plus, you'll increment the value. By clicking on minus, you'll decrement the value. And it seems very basic, correct? So in this basic application, what we learn is, we learn to see how this design, how to design the UI. How do we uh, design the uh, menu? How do we keep our action bar in the, in the right way? All these things. Let's say if you click on this option, the score is reset. So this application is the first application that we would work on. So this will be really interesting while we learn it. So look forward to it. Now the next application, um, the other applications that I have on this device that we will be discussing is another hydration reminder app. So if you want to get reminded to have some water every single every 15 minutes or every one hour you can use this application okay so as i clicked on send alarm i will get the alarm in uh, three four minutes that is the other application that we will use we will also learn we will also focus on ui with the help of uh, some applications such as groups so where you'll have a list of fruits along with the images also we will have favorite movies we will understand how to develop a UI like this with the help of a favorite uh, movies application. And this is Recycler View with staggered grid layout manager used on our project. We can use other, other set of images and other set of uh, movie names as we work on it. So we'll also work with uh, networking libraries. See, uh, Hydration Reminder app gave me a notification. It says, uh, drink a glass of water, correct? So this kind of notifications, I'll keep on getting them. So what I'll do is I'll stop these notifications. I'll say cancel alarm. So we also discuss Google Books. Google Books is an API that is available by Google. Let us say I want to have Java Books. If I click on fetch data, whatever the Java books that are listed out, you'll get all the titles. Not only that, you can also further improvise this project and I will guide you through the improvisation of the same. Okay, so what is the, uh, the most recent project that I discussed with the other batch is this one, Daily Samachar. So you can get the news based on these categories. Let's say if you want to have entertainment news. You would select entertainment and hit on this get news. And then you will do networking and you will get the news displayed to you right away on the recycler view. Taking a bit of time though. Let me reopen this project. Entertainment, get news. Yeah. So you got the news along with the images displayed on the recycler view. So Patan crosses 14 crore in advanced ticket sales. Wow, fantastic. Wonder if BCC has courage to tell the truth about uh, Churchill, Shekhar Kapoor. See, these are all based on entertainment news. Okay. So we used uh, InShorts News API, which is a which is a fake API. I mean, uh, an API developed by an individual. It is not a proper API. However, we are managing, we are getting the data, the recent data we are getting. So, and you can see more about this news. We also have used Google Custom Chrome tabs to open the original article.
So this is Google Custom Chrome tag. This is not Google Chrome actually. We will show. We will. I will. Uh, I will teach you how to use Google Chrome as well to open links. However, this is Google Custom Chrome tabs, which is after reading this article, let's say you want to close it. You can close it by clicking on Into Mark here. If you want to click on Read More, you can click on Read More to open the original article that is published. So the original article is published on MoneyControl.com, and you can go through this. Right after reading this, if you want to close it, you can directly close it. So this is how we will develop the news application and we will sophisticate it further. This is not uh, the end of the, the end result of the application because I'm still teaching students on uh, how to further improvise this. We have been using uh, material design library to customize the UI that is looking that is looking good right now. We'll we'll make it fantastic. Right. So any kind of news you can fetch, not only entertainment, let's say you are interested into technology. You can select technology, hit on get news. Get the technology related news. Okay. The loading time it depends on the speed of your internet. Mahindra shares video on deep fake asks how are we preparing to guard against it? Scammers promise up to 5,000 daily on like in YouTube videos in WhatsApp scam. See, you get, you get, you get ads on YouTube. They say that uh, by just watching YouTube videos, you can earn money. So don't fall uh, for their trap. So it's published on 22nd January, 2023 Sunday, yesterday, written by Paraya Pragya Swastik. Okay. So these kind of uh, applications we will develop. Okay. There are more, many other applications which I do not have on this device because I just uh, I just taught a few applications to the students and some of them are available. Some of them are missing out because I reset this device. I have them in the repository. So how do I give you the notes? How do I give you the notes? I will give you a GitHub repository like this. A full set of GitHub repository I will be giving you. So whatever we discuss so far, whatever we whatever we cover in the in the application, sorry, in the course, whatever is covered, everything will be given as a notes to you. You will also be given assignments. You will also be given assignments. That's another additional thing that we have. And I'll also give you the Java notes to refresh your basics. Let's say you want to try this uh, code. You will just copy this and go back and practice it. Okay. So you are given links for uh, practicing it online. Not only this, you will be given all the links that are helpful for you for further exploring on the same concept. Okay, let's say I discuss about uh, about one concept. I'll give you the link to the official documentation of that concept. Let's say edit text. You'll go to the official documentation of edit text so that you can learn more by looking at the documentation. Right? So this is the official documentation of Android and you're taken to that. Not only this, you will also be given an ebook that is written for you. So this is an ebook written by me, and it includes almost around 30 chapters, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So everything is covered. Whatever is necessary, everything is covered. And most of these concepts we will also cover. Okay. Let's say you want to uh, you want to display notifications. You can just go to the notifications concept. You'll understand what is notification. Uh, why notification is important, history of the notifications, how do we send a notification. Everything is explained to you in a detailed way along with the images. You can also copy this code easily. This is copyable code only. And you can download this project in multiple um, formats, PDF, HTML, e-publication. That's your wish. You can download this project. So this ebook will also be given to you. 
as a nodes. Right. So yeah, that's it. That's it about the course. You want to know anything else? Just let me know. So the course duration. I will get a question for sure. What is the course duration? How long will you take sessions? How much time will you can uh, take the session? See, um, as these are initial days of our training, we will we will only have forty five minutes to one hour session. Slowly, when we pick up on the speed, we will be having one hour session daily. It will be the sessions will last for forty five days. The sessions are uh, you'll have 45 days of course okay the course content is already shared to you via email and you will have the detailed course content provided on the website all right so this course is entirely dependent on java we will only cover the very very minimal basics of kotlin at the end of the session but that does not count at all we primarily work, we focus on Java. The reason for me picking up Java even today is because Java is evergreen, guys. You can develop mobile applications, desktop-based applications, web applications, and many more using Java. And Java is, uh, Java is not, uh, some some programming language that will extend in the next 10 years in the next 10 years you will definitely have java in the market so i'm good with java this fast this fast enough compared to kotlin java is really fast kotlin depends on java because kotlin has to convert itself so that it fits into jvm it uses jvm it uses other java libraries it is interoperable that is the very reason Kotlin is slow. <clears throat> there is a demand for Kotlin. I'm not denying it. If you ask me, th there's no demand for Kotlin developers. I don't say that. There is a demand for Kotlin developers, but I don't personally like it because it is slow. And the code is concise, guys. If, you, if somebody wants to learn Kotlin, they should definitely have a good idea over Java. Otherwise, they will get confused with the concise code that is available in Kotlin. And Kotlin uh, copies the features of Python. It also copies the features of Java. So that it became both functional and object oriented. But Java is purely object oriented programming language. So that's the very reason we depend on Java. Right. So I'll share you these repositories very soon. And if you have more questions, you can shoot them at me. I'll be ready to answer your questions. Anil asks, what software do we need to install and set? We are supposed to install Android Studio and I'll take you through the process of installation tomorrow. Okay, through a video, I will show you. I'll also give you the... Uh, Uh, certain links to help you get started with the installation process. Deepak Singh is asking to provide admin number. Uh, all right, Deepak, we'll, we'll surely provide that. So Ashish was asking, can we be able to make live apps after the course or any advanced course we need to do after this? Um, I don't think you should do advanced course after this because I will be providing whatever the tools and techniques that are necessary to get to get started. Once you get started, obviously you will have to self-explore and learn a few concepts. That is for sure. However, however, this course will definitely provide you all those basics and the skills necessary to explore more. Right. What are the system requirements? System requirement, I recommend if you want to continue, you should ha definitely have an i3, at least an i3 processor that is of at least 10th generation. 
and at least four gigs of RAM is needed and 10 gigs of space is needed for this course. Okay, if you have the system requirement, you can continue. Okay, next is uh, Akansha is so Anil is asking, can we develop projects based on these sessions? Yes, of course. Of course, Anil. I've shown you a few projects, right? So the, those are all developed in the sessions itself. So if you work after the sessions also, you'll be able to develop more and more projects like such. You can even develop better ones if you keep on working after the sessions and based on the assignment that I'm giving you, you can really develop the projects. Kanchi is asking. So in interview, they don't ask for Kotlin. Is it okay if we know Java? They see the requirements differ from company to company, Akansha. People may ask questions on Flutter. If I am into an interview, they may ask questions on Flutter, which for which I would say I don't know. It's absolutely fine to say don't know. Okay. If they have requirement in Java, they will be asking you Java questions. If they have requirement on Kotlin, they will be asking you Kotlin questions to keep it simple, to keep it simple, to keep it simple. We are going to work for companies and companies are paying us for work that we do. So based on the requirement, if they have Kotlin requirement, they will ask for sure. Yeah, hope you got it. Now you may ask me, uh, do we have more Kotlin jobs or more Java jobs? Based on Android, do we have more Kotlin jobs or more Java jobs? We have more Java jobs because there are many applications that are already developed in Java. And there is a maintenance and updating updating of those applications is required. Of course, there are good enough, good amount of jobs in Kotlin as well. I'm not denying it. I'm not denying it at all. Ashish is asking, will you teach us load the apps on Play Store? Yes, definitely Ashish. We will host an application on Google Play Store and I'll show you the process of doing it. Hemant Kumar is asking, when will you start the Java class? We will start Java sessions in just two, two days, but I'll not taking you deep into the concepts. I'll share you notes, which is essential, but I'll not take you deep into the concepts. You must be knowing Java a little bit to get started with Android. A little bit of Java is uh, enough. You just have to understand what is written in Java, right? So that understanding I'll give you. I'll not take you deep into the concepts. It's not core Java course, so we'll not be taking you deep into it. But if you know Java, it is already better. If you know any other programming language, you can get started with this course. Uh, Prince is asking, I want to learn with Kotlin language. So this is not the course, Prince. Thanks for asking though. How is different from iOS apps? Is it replica of Android? It's different from my voice apps. Um, did not get your question, Ashish. Can you come again? We using any other tools in Android? No, Android Studio. That's it. That's all of it. No, Anil. With this course, you cannot convert an Android app into web app. No. I'm not teaching you anything based on React or anything based on Flutter. I mean, Flutter uses React, vice versa. So I'm not I'm not going to teach you the cross-platform app development thing. I'll I'll be teaching you uh, the native way of developing applications using Java, using Android Studio, and the SDK provided by Google. Will you be showing how to update data in apps on daily basis after launching in Play Store like Flipkart Amazon? I will show you the libraries that are helpful for that, but we will not be doing a practical on it. Okay. 
If I learn Android, can I learn iOS? Any similarities? No. A few similarities would definitely be there, like emulators. We, we call it emulators, which are virtual devices. And iOS developers, they call it simulators. Okay. So they use Swift programming uh, language and we use Java. So Swift and Java, they are not, they are not similar. So no similarities. Ashish. If you really are interested in learning iOS, uh, you can di right away start learning iOS. Need not to learn Android. But if you learn Android and still want to learn iOS, you can do both. That's that's possible. Which emulator to use? Uh, I will show you that, Akansha. We can also use our physical devices. I don't recommend my students to use emulators. I'll show them the uh, I will show them how to create an emulator and how to use it. However, I don't recommend anybody to use emulator. I want my students to use their personal devices for debugging. I'll show you how. All of them I'll show you how. Good question though. Thank you, Akansha, for shooting that question. Do I need to learn HTML for it? Absolutely no need. It. No need. Sarfaraj Khan. Uh, absolutely no need to learn HTML for this course. Rohit is asking Angular versus Android Studio. Is it good to learn Android Studio now? Yes, it's good. You can also move to Angular if you want to. That's absolutely your call. Android Studio had good demand in the market because there are thousands of applications that are rolled out in the Play Store. And people, people need developers like you who can spend some time and develop Android applications for uh, for a good uh, community of users. Ashish is asking if we create web app and Android app, how to bind both using services, using REST services. Ashish, we will we will I will teach you how to make use of REST services. Okay. If I learn Android, then it is easy to learn Flutter. You can directly learn Flutter. It's not no need of learning Android uh, native application development. And, uh, uh, Flutter uh, involves other programming language and other techniques. Native, S uh, native SDK is all dependent on um, native SDK. I mean, the course is dependent on native SDK. So the thing is that you can learn both. You can learn both. If you really are interested, you can learn both. Okay. But if you are really interested towards one thing, you learn it. You learn it first and then go to the next one. All right. Okay. So thanks for asking so many questions. It actually shows your interest. Great. I, I just got a very, 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 very important and good question from Santosh. Are there any certifications available? After this course, I am telling you with good practice, you can directly apply for Google Associate android developer certification so this certification costs you 6500 rupees and this is not a certification that is given to you for selecting uh, options in multiple choice questions you will be given a half done project by the google team you're supposed to complete the rest of the half by yourself in just eight hours of time and upload it back to google server once you're done submitting it google team will actually review your certification submission. Once it is reviewed, you will be given a score. And if you pass, if, if you pass, you will be taken an interview by one of the Googlers and that is called exit interview. 
only then you will be given a certification and it is it will also allow your profile to be hosted on google dev community a great certification and this course would definitely get you started we will learn whatever is essential for completing this certification in this course and you will be you can directly at, directly uh, attend to this certification by paying just 6500 indian rupees okay you can also get a study guide you can go through the content i will show the rest of the content once you are if you are interested i will show you the rest of the content i'll i'll take you the places where you can study and prepare right this is one good certification that anybody can achieve if you are sincerely learning the course content the content that we are covering in this session if you are good at it you can definitely be able to complete this certification i'll i'll share you the additional links as well for additional um, learning for this certification so this will this will give a good impression to your employers right you will also have a place in google dev community so google dev directory okay in the google developer directory you will have a place if someone search for your name sai kumar is asking is it necessary to learn java for android development see so my name is listed out because uh, my certification is completed in 2017 so we we'll only have three years validity right in the similar way your name will also get displayed in india especially there are very less number of people okay very less number of people are there in india so these are all the people listed out in the google so from nagpur somebody is there dipali shah so your name will also get listed out here in the google developers community group so you have these benefits out of uh, this and you can also create a google developer profile so google dot dev if you go here if you complete the certification you can also build a nice profile on google dev okay all right so i'll show you all these things in the course now sai kumar is asking a question is it necessary to learn java for android development yes if you want to develop applications based on java or on kotlin if you want to develop applications based on kotlin or on java learning java is very much needed if you want to go for a flutter or uh, or other cross platform tools like xamarin ionic framework for these things you don't need to learn java if you if you are good at python you can develop android applications to some extent because python sdk is not completely developed unfortunately if you want to be a native application developer if you want to be a native application developer whether let it be in java or let it be in kotlin you are still supposed to need java with that said we are we are end of the we are at the end of the session the timings of the session is from morning 7 o'clock till 8 o'clock make sure you are attending the session at sharp 7 o'clock okay guys thank you so much for your participation you gave me a really good day thank you so much take care i'll see you tomorrow at sharp 7 o'clock Thanks, Akansha.